Uh, welcome to the Books and Wine podcast. Uh, and today we have a special guest and I will let her introduce herself. I'm glad that you've tuned in once again. I know it's been a while since you had this voice, uh, but we've been doing amazing wine things. And today we bring you a person that I greatly admire and that is doing a lot of things in wine in Nairobi. Welcome, Kalika. Welcome Thank to the you podcast. so much, Wendy. Um, mm -hmm. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here. And um, um, thank you to the wines and book community or the yeah. books and wine community rather for uh, taking the time to listen in yeah. and it is fantastic to be here and to experience this with all of you so yes so um, a little bit about myself my name is Kalika um, and I started a wine business 20 years ago so I have been in the wine industry now 20 years wow congratulations and thank you and it's been a phenomenal journey it's been um, challenging yeah. it has been exhilarating but it has been very rewarding so yeah. I think it's definitely been one of the best things that could have happened to me in my lifetime so wow that's yeah. really amazing I wouldn't have guessed that you know, you're a day over 20 yourself. So. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I will take that. I will take so that. So to hear that you've been working since you were zero years old. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. No, that's, that's really good to hear. I mean, 20 years is a long time uh, in business. It means that you're doing something right. Uh, but also that your passion is there and you've, you've stuck it through the, you know, the waves and the, you know, the highs and lows as of business as is life, right? Yes, and I, I don't think the wine industry is any uh, different to mm -hmm. other businesses. Um, I feel that everybody thinks it's much more glamorous than it is. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I recently with Team Wine Kenya, I looked at them when they were preparing for... Um, for the competition. For the competition. Yeah. And poor things, they were so exhausted because on a day they were tasting 30, 40 wines and they wow. were shattered. And I'm like, yes, well, the business of wine is not easy. Yeah. They, it is not easy it's at greedy. all. It's greedy. It's greedy. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, if we can, like, look back at 20, year, 20 years ago, like, what was the inspiration behind Mia Wines? Um, how did the name come about? Um, so Mia, as you know in Swahili, means 100 wines. So when yeah. my mom and I started this business, we had this vision. Okay. We wanted to be 100 wines. We wanted to import 100 different wines to Kenya. Yeah. Now we kind of got a bit carried away, so we are now 216 wines. Yay. And she won't let me change the name. <laughs> we are still Mia Wines. She's like, we're not changing the name. No, I think, I think um, the risk of being Mia Mbili Wines, yeah. you know, yeah. you, you can be yeah. another Mia Mbili <laughs> minds, you know. Yeah. It's, yeah. Okay. Congratulations. That's a huge, huge, huge number, and it's exciting to hear. I mean, I, I'm a, I walk around in wine circles quite a little bit, so I can see there's a lot of diversity and a lot of flavor in it. But I know you also have your own private label. Right? Yes, we do. Yeah. So. Um, now I should say this probably about 15 years ago we decided yeah. that we wanted to create a wine for Africa yeah um, and so we created Mara wines and the Mara wines journey has been a phenomenal journey on its own as a brand yeah um, because it started off as somebody else's um, wine with our label and yeah. we have grown it now um, to be our own grapes our own label our own wine um, and we are now controlling the whole process, which is a wonderful feeling. And wow. I think for us, the icing on the cake is the fact that now our white has won over 16 awards. Um, Amazing. The most latest being a Decanter 2024 Bronze Award. What? Um, yes, it's fantastic. Oh my God. Um, yeah. The Nyokundu has six awards behind it. Yeah. The Mara Tamu Rose has, I think, nine as at Monday or something, if I'm not wrong. So obviously we have all this information on our website. Yeah. But um, it's really nice for an African wine to be accredited internationally and yeah. recognized internationally by the U.S. wine ratings, by yeah. Decanter, yeah. you know, uh, by Michelangelo Wine Awards. Yeah. So it's lovely for other people to appreciate your efforts mm -hmm. and to, you know, take notice. So I think that has been phenomenal for us. Wow. Congratulations. I didn't know this and I'm really, really happy to hear that. And for everybody hearing about this, I think this is your cue to pick up Amia Wines uh, on your next shopping trip and you can di discover for yourself, you know? Yes, because so the Mara Wines was created with 
Kenyan food in mind. Now, as you know, Kenya, we are quite a um, multicultural community. Yeah. And we eat everything. We eat Asian food, we eat Indian food, we have a lo- amazing Italian food, but I, I also our local Kenyan food is very flavorful. Yeah. And so the idea behind Mara was to create a wine that works with all these foods. Awesome. Awesome. I'm glad you brought that up because um, one of the biggest barriers um, to, you know, pairing wine, especially when you're in the African continent, is that a lot of literature, a lot of lessons that are taught, they're taught without that context of our food, right? So you'll see, oh, you can pair this with clams, you can pair with this with... So not everyday food, but, you know, food that tends to be... So it's really good to hear that there is a wine specifically designed with our cuisine in mind. Yes, yeah. and so, um, and this is where I think, you know, uh, Africa, our food is our best kept secret. Mm-hmm. You know, how amazing our ingredients are, how natural they are, how yeah. pesticide free they are. Yeah, I think it's our best secret and the fact that our recipes have not traveled the world yet. Mm. But that said, I think it's very important to demystify food pairing. Like I was recently at a training yeah. and uh, a trainer was training salespeople and she says this wine goes very well with a Mediterranean salad and I looked at her and I said what does who's that mean? had a Mediterranean salad yeah, in Utawala like yeah. like in Utawala you cannot find a Mediterranean salad which is obviously feta olives cucumber it's not a Kenyan food yeah, but true. the same thing the same wine would go really well with kachumbari yeah right yeah because with, you have the same Exactly. Same flavors, yeah. but different name. Yeah. So I think it's important to demystify our f- cuisine. Yeah. And also to find similarities. But I think for the next 10 years, what I see as a future of Africa yeah. is a lot of experimentation. We are going to drink red wine with fish. Mm. You know, we are going to drink white wine with beef. Yeah. You know, we're yeah. going to drink sweet wine with pizza yeah okay yeah and that's okay yeah it's gonna take us time because every country has their own uh, cuisine and culture and you know that that and comes through the food it, how you really prepare it affects. your spices like ethiopian spices are so different to kenyan spices which true. are so different to south african spices true um you know so i think the next 10 years the big focus is going to be on Let's experiment. Yeah, which which sounds like fun, right? <laughs> it is, and I think it's about time. Yeah, I think Africa's ready now. And I think um, along with the experimentation, maybe also is like documenting those experiments, right? So that we can um, have that lexicon, like that language out there in the world uh, that other people can see that okay, even when I come to Kenya, this is what I should try with with a Malbec. You know, that kind of thing. So then we have our own local references and other people who are also coming to experience our cuisine have local references. Exactly. And I think that's so important. And I think we are now ready. We're entering that space where we can set up the systems to offer that, Mm. you know, and have the information readily available. Yeah, that's very exciting. Um, And in addition to, you know, having and looking after 216 different wines <laughs> uh, which I'm sure is a huge you know mammoth operation by itself um, you are also um, bringing something new to Kenya yes we is a are. wine to Africa yes yeah. so um, wine to Africa is my I'd like to say it's my legacy project yeah. um, after spending so many years in the industry there are things that you see and that you want to change. Yeah. And for me, I think one of the biggest things that I want to see change in Africa in the next 20 years is the importance our continent is given by the international community. Mm-hmm. And by importance, I mean we have Pro Wine in Germany, we have uh, Wine Paris in France, yeah. you know, we have Wine Hong Kong. We have Vin Italy, we have Sagal in Portugal, but we don't actually have a trade show focus on Africa. What does that mean? What does that mean? We're a 54 country continent. Does it mean that there's a lot of opportunity? 
Mm-hmm. Does it mean that when we attend these big shows, we don't get the same face time that European buyers or American buyers or Australian buyers would get? Yeah. But does it also mean that there's this huge untapped potential? Yeah. Right? Because yeah. you have 54 countries that could possibly want to purchase your wine, yeah. could poss- who want to drink your wine. Yeah. And you have 54 countries of people who are willing to try something new. Yeah. Something they haven't done before. True, true. So we're very excited. In January, we're having our first trade show for Africa. It's called Wine to Africa. Woo! Um, our website is wine to Africa, wine number two africa.com. Yeah. Um, and we will be opening it to the public on the second day so okay. that, um, and we'd like to give you a code as well so your followers can get discounted tickets. Yay. Okay. Uh, if uh, you're listening, um, so you can check the show notes for that code and uh, be sure to check out. Yeah, I'd come and uh, so what I say is come and see all the different products mm-hmm. um, people want to export to Africa. Yeah, and come and give your feedback because I think there are a lot of perceptions um, that we need to break. True, you know, and a lot of trends that new trends that we are seeing coming up in Kenya. Yeah, um, and in Africa as a continent, right? That we should be aware about. Like we live in this uh, illusion that only the Nigerians drink champagne. True. You know, the most <laughs> amount of sh- champagne sold in Africa is actually in the Ivory Coast. Oh, wait. Yeah. Oh. It's changed. Wow. You know, okay, so okay. I think it's very important to address that yeah. and, you know, to have a conversation, to come and see, yeah. you know, what the world has to offer for Africa. Yeah. So we're very excited. And I mean, we are, I mean, Africa by 2050, we will be the most populous in the entire world. Yes, So we will. I think anybody, anywhere, you know, if you're not doing business with Africans or in Africa, um, what is the future of that business? So it's really Africa time. Yeah, it's it's time for Africa. And that's yeah. what we say. Um, at Wine to Africa, we're saying it's time for Africa because there's a lot of fear. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of misinformation. And we're here to clear that up. Yeah. You know, like um, I read a statistic this week only um, mm-hmm. which says that 80 million tons of wine exported to Africa every year. 80 hmm. million tons. That's hmm. a lot of That is, <laughs> that sounds like a whole lake somewhere <laughs> of just wine, right? Yeah, and this is coming to the continent. Yeah, so and we are also producing some wine, you know. Yeah, we so are quite actually. A, yeah, quite a good amount of wine. For, of course, South Africa has been doing that for a Many couple years, hundred years. Yeah. Tanzania is doing wine production in Dodoma. Yes. Um, Ethiopia. Ethiopia is also <laughs> producing wine. Kenya. Kenya, we, we are wine. also yeah. have some wine. Yeah. Um, so, look, as a continent, there's a lot of potential. Yeah. Right? So, Not our excited. aim is to bring importers yeah. from the continent to mm-hmm. Nairobi and to bring producers from around the world to Nairobi. Yeah. And to basically sh- let them meet each other to see what is the potential for business in the future. Mm. No, that sounds exciting. Um, can we have those dates again? 22nd so is- and 23rd of January at yeah. the Sarit Center. At the Sarit Center Expo. Um, great. So what are some of the highlights for the attendees that you know are coming to Wine to Africa? What can they look out for, whether they be um, importers um, or exporters or the general public or people in FNB? You know, basically the entire industry, what are some of the, those highlights? So I think um, for importers, there's an opportunity to meet brands that want to be present in Africa. Mm-hmm. Um, for producers, um, there's an opportunity to meet importers in countries where you have not previously sold. Yeah. For producers, there's also this opportunity to demystify Africa, to understand how business is done in Africa, which yeah. is possibly very different to other places. Yeah. Um, you know, to understand our laws, our, for example, what our COC laws are for Kenya. True. You know, what uh, tests are required, what quality standards are required. I think this is very important um, yeah. to understand our taxation system because Kenyan taxation is very different to Nigerian taxation, which is very different to Zambian taxation. True. You know, to understand the different uh, tax brackets. Yeah. Um, for the F and B industry, I think there's a huge opportunity here for you to see what is actually available under one roof. Mm. You know, at the moment in Kenya, we're almost seventy or eighty wine importers right yeah. now. Yeah. So you don't have a complete picture, mm. okay, of what is available. Yeah. Right. Um, 
you don't have a complete picture of what is available on the continent. Mm. So I think for F&B teams, this is a fantastic way to come and see what other countries are doing, what is working, what is not working, you know, um is there some opportunity here for you? Yeah. You know, yeah. um for individuals, I think it's a fantastic learning experience, especially as we bring uh we start our journey on experimentation which we've been on for a while now yeah but i definitely think you should come you should try the wines yeah you should have an opinion you know mm-hmm. do i love it do i not love it what would i pay for it yeah right can i is it a wine that needs food or is it a wine that i can drink on its own so okay. okay you know i think these are all conversations that are important to have yeah and if you are just a general wine lover yeah. you know and you're somebody like me who sits with a book and a glass of wine on a sunday afternoon yeah um It's important to come and just taste some wine and learn some more. I think there's so much to learn because every wine is different. No, definitely. Um sounds like somewhere I will be. <laughs> we look forward to <laughs> from, having you there. You know, from morning to whatever time you you close. Um and I hope if you're listening to this podcast, I'll see you there. Uh drop a comment and let me know um who else you're going to bring. Um and I'm glad you mentioned uh something about you know the laws the importation uh, regulations and i know kenya has been an evolving you know there's a lot of changes around regulations and taxations uh but what has been some other challenges that you faced um you know being in the industry for so long yeah so i think seasonality in terms of every season comes with its own challenges so um mm-hmm. to give you an example in the early days nobody drank rosé wine okay Oh, um, we would sell one container of rosé every 3 years. Whoa. Okay, because people didn't understand pink. They yeah. were like it's red or it's white. White, yes. Right? What is this other in between? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that whole challenge of education mm-hmm. was some happened a while back. Then recently most recently obviously with the shipping lines there's been huge challenges with the wars going around around the world, the world you know, um channels closed and things like that. So Yeah. Um I think every season comes with challenges but I think the importance is accepting them and yeah. working with them around them yeah you know and not getting disheartened by them true yeah I think at the end of the day like can you say the hustle is real we keep going yeah <laughs> um yeah and I think so education wine education is something that I've been on uh like when i started uh books and wine i just started out of experimentation i went for a wine tasting with galina wines okay it was in the middle of the day um it was a wednesday afternoon i was having a mental block at work i was scrolling the internet and i saw oh TRM there's a wine tasting and I was like okay that sounds like something that will take me off excel sheets so <laughs> so I went and you know it turned out to be a really interesting presentation that uh, gave me an in-depth look into wine uh, production uh, the growing of grapes like things I had never thought you know because sometimes as a consumer you know you're not thinking what what was the journey before this liquid got here yeah, true, so true. yeah so from there i caught the bug and i said okay i don't know my friends don't know this so i need them to know that so i put together a group of my friends and i asked um somebody i knew who was in wine uh to come and just do a tasting for us and after that they were like okay so when is the next one oh wonderful <laughs> yeah so that that the, and that's been four years now since 2019 and i've as the more i meet every month with my group of girls and sometimes boys mm-hmm. <laughs> um i'm always learning i'm always learning something new so wine education is something that i'm i'm a student of the grape yeah. and i'm right there and there's always something new to discover so i'm also curious to like from your perspective what is the role of education in growing like wine appreciation and consumption um across africa and how do you see wine to africa also contributing to this effort so i think education is probably the key ingredient for the success of wine in africa i think it's important to demystify wine yeah you know it shouldn't be something that people avoid because they don't understand you know so 
somebody says to you, this is a wooded Chardonnay, and you're like, oh, oh, I don't want wood in my drink. You know, I don't want wood in my drink. Exactly. Um, so I think going forward, yeah. um, education is very, very important. And I think Wine to Africa will provide a good platform yeah. for Africans yeah. to access that information. Mm. And to access that information in a way you can understand. So back to my salad story. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> we are hoping to be able to um, bring together the old world of wine, yeah. but the African way. You know, because wine has been there for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. True. Right. But we've never tried to bring wine and the African way together. So I'm hoping mm. that Wine to Africa is going to be that, that will be the platform on which this happens. Amazing. Um, and because we, you, you slightly touched on it. Um, I want to ask you if you can give us some exclusive in terms of like the structure is, um, yes, you've mentioned there's going to be uh, trade, a trade fair, um, uh, business matching and meetings. Uh, what, what else is, is there going to be panels, uh, so masterclasses? We are focusing are on one big panel, mm -hmm. um, which is going to be the trends of Africa. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I think this will be an eye-opening panel because um, it will basically demystify again, mm -hmm. you know, what people think is happening on the continent and what is actually happening on the continent. Because there's this huge perception that Africans only drink sweet wine, mm. you know, but is that really true? Mm. Of those 80 million liters that come onto the continent, how much is actually sweet? Yeah. You know? Um, there's this big conception that South Africa exports the most of, amount of wine to Africa. Yeah. And you'll be shocked. It's not South Africa. Mm. So please attend the panel. Talk to know who is the, actually the biggest exporter of wine to Africa. It will yeah. be a big surprise for wow. sure. So. Okay. 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 That's interesting. Um, so uh, ideally, uh, anybody who has any interest in wine, whether you're a consumer, you're a trader, you're in the service industry, um, you're a fan, you're in media, should be there. Yes, um, definitely. I'm glad you've mentioned like a couple of statistics and I find that um, the African, some challenges in Africa is always a question of information and data. Yes. So um, how do you see that, you know, um, yeah, because sometimes you, okay, well, for other markets, uh, you find data that is almost to the nitty gritty, you know, these volumes and this, whatever. So, do we have, is it something that Wine to Africa is also looking into? Like to no, so data mm -hmm. is not going to be our speciality. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to focus more on the trends, we're going to focus on the opportunity. Yeah. Because I think IWSR is doing a fantastic job in collecting this data. Um, I know the FAO has got some fabulous reports on Africa and how much wine is um, sent here. Yeah. Um, so, my thoughts around this are that data is fantastic, but yes. we need to distill that data mm. what is that data telling us mm. right and yeah. um, I think uh, well, something we've done quite well with Wine to Africa is actually figuring that out so please follow us on LinkedIn and on our social media yeah. um, Facebook and Instagram so we are Wine to Wine number, number two, two Africa, Africa. yeah because um, you will see lots of data coming out in the next couple of weeks mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, about not just Kenya, not just South Africa, but, you know, countries like Tunisia, mm. you know, countries like Ghana, Interesting. Kind of countries like Senegal. We're not just focusing on Kenya. Yeah, yes? that's amazing. We love Kenya, Kenya's home, <laughs> and we have the best um, food, I have to say this. Um, I'm from here. Yeah. Um, but um, the, the idea is we're trying to bring the continent together and I realize this is something that is very important to me because even Mara for example the Mara wines that we make ourselves yeah the wine is actually made in South Africa mm. okay we do all the expert wine making over there yeah we bottle it over there yeah but when it comes here we put the beads around each bottle and those beads basically support destitute women in Barcelona in Samburu in Mara land you know awesome. women who don't have husbands or yeah. you know um are single moms yeah. and are just trying to get 
But, through the day, yeah, you know, like get from one meal to the next. So yeah. we're very proud to say that we've been focused on this from the very beginning. Yeah, you know, and the idea has always been to bring the continent together. Wow, amazing! Um, I it could be early um, to ask this question, but do you have any indication of what kind of representation from? the continent is likely to be in the room are we seeing all the 54 states represented so we are looking at 20 states for mm -hmm. sure are going to be present yeah. um we are obviously pushing for more yeah um but as it now i can confirm we have about 20 countries that will 20 importers from 20 countries that will be Whoa, here oh congratulations that's a, that's amazing uh Thank and you. that's no small feat <laughs> Thank you, yeah. as somebody who also works in with a pan-african focused brand in you know my other endeavors i know it's no small feat to you know have representation from the entire continent yeah. but i think it's efforts like this you know uh, from one year you start with 20 and the next year you you'll have 30, 30 35 yeah and before you know it we are all in this big room together yeah no so we're, we're hoping to do wine to africa year on year mm -hmm. um and to grow it organically um because i just think there's a lot of potential um for the continent but we don't want to disappoint people mm. so we will start small and we will grow it no, congratulations sure. uh and that's that's amazing to hear um so because this is a books and wine podcast yes yeah? <laughs> yes i love books so I, I know you do uh, <laughs> and i'm trying to grab you into one of the book discussions and which I know is the next one darling i would keen uh, to know what is the next yeah, book we're so reading the, so the book that we're currently reading is called august town okay um it's set in jamaica and it's this very beautiful story about a boy who is being raised by his grandmother and you know so it's a uh, yeah it's it's a view of Kingston. Amazing. Yeah, from this family's, you know, setting. So yeah, that's a book we're reading and I think we'll be meeting on October. No, wait, already in October, we're sorry. Already. So in November on November tenth. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, so please 10th. send me a copy of the book. So I hope to be there on November tenth. <laughs> and now we have your record. Yes, you know, as having you have me on right, I will up. be there on November tenth. No, sure. that's amazing. Yeah, sure. Uh, so basically, um, I want to play a fun game with you. Sure. We have some wine in the glass, yes. right? And what would you? What What is? And because the book and wine. It, we're always playing around that dance of pairing books and wine, right? And sometimes literally. So there are no right or wrong answers. But from you looking at this wine, smelling it, does it has it reminded you of any story, any book that you've read recently or in the past? You know, what, what vibes is it giving? So can I be honest with you? Mm -hmm. This I know which wine it is. Um, it's okay. a Merlot. Um, okay. And this is the kind of wine that I would drink if I'm in Mount Kenya, okay. sitting by the fireplace yeah. in the evening with a book on my lap. And if I tell you the type of book I would be reading, like what comes to mind, it's yeah. like a Jane Austen. Ah, you know? so like a classic. A classic, you know, feel okay. good, yeah. very positive vibes. Yeah. And old, proper English, you know, written exactly. in a... Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I, I dig that, and yeah. I think Malo. Okay, I can see that. Yeah. yeah. So this is not a beach wine, is what mm. I'm saying. Uh, this, uh, is definitely. Definitely. <laughs> this is definitely mountain wine. This is definitely mountain wine. You need to be wrapped up in some cozy, cozy yeah, blanket. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and you need a classic. You need, you know, something beautiful, very mm. well written, something timeless, and yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Something there you, you can go. enjoy it all ages. <laughs> yeah, so thank you. We'll definitely try Malo with a Jane Austen. So that's a, that's a gorgeous pairing. Thank uh, you. And thank you for that tip. Final, final, before we let you go, um, what, 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 are, what are you excited about? Uh, what are you looking forward to that we can follow along? Uh, whether with, I mean, I know we've talked about Wine to Africa quite a bit and we have the dates, which is January May 2nd and 23rd. January 22nd, 23rd in Nairobi at the Sarit Center Expo Hall. You can get tickets from the link in the show notes. Uh, yes, but what else? 
So first of all, I think I want to thank you, Wendy, for giving me this opportunity. Um, we've been friends for many years, but yeah. we've never actually thought to do this. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I want to thank you for coming to every one of our Mia Wines tasting. And if anybody yeah. else is interested in attending a Mia Wines tasting, we have quite a few coming up. Yeah. Please follow us on Mia Wines Kenya, um, both on Facebook and on Instagram. Yeah. Um, I think the thing that I'm most looking forward to in the next four months is going to be Wine to Africa. Yeah. And I'm very excited for the festive season because I know there's lots of fantastic offers and mm. there's a lot of positive energy in the air right now, which yeah. is, you know, people want to meet, people want to get together. Yeah. We're all celebrating life. So I think I want to definitely say to everyone out there that please continue celebrating, you know, and making the most of every day. Yeah. And Mara celebration. Yes. And I Mara mean, there's celebration. A whole, there's is a there. whole way for the season. Yeah. Yes. We have a Mara celebration, which is um, very similar to a champagne. Actually, made champagne style and we yeah. have it in a 1.5 liter and a Ooh. 750 ml okay and we will get you a special code for discount for your listeners awesome. so we will give you that to put in your comments as well awesome thank you thank you so much um so i have nothing else to add but to say thank you thank you for taking thank the you, time it's um, a pleasure yeah wishing you all the best um hope to see you um in January on the 22nd and the 23rd at the Sarit Expo Hall for Wine to Africa. That is your cue to clink on the show notes and get your ticket. And just to also say that it pays, it's very rewarding to be a Books and Wine listener because look, you are now also getting discount codes for, for, for our celebration. For yes. celebration. <laughs> so amazing. Thank you so much. And that's all. Until the next time, my dear listener. Cheers. Cheers.